Hey, I'm Adam Post, publisher of The College of the Dead, publisher of The Mermaids, publisher of independent comics for more than 35 years. I've published more than a thousand comic books, worked with a lot of industry people in comics, and I've never seen anything as crazy as this. Uh, but this is an important story, and uh, I definitely want to cover this in a video and give you my take on it. This is coming from a website called Bleeding Fool. Uh, it's a comic industry website. And the title of the article is Expose, The Whisper Network, Exists and Seeks to Destroy Male Comic Prose. Uh, so what this is, is uh, the author Penny Parker um, has been part of a Facebook group of women in comic books. And look, there's nothing wrong with women getting together and um, having a Facebook group, professionals or just friends, let them do whatever they want to do. But apparently what they've been doing is basically collaborating and conspiring to create problems uh, for male professionals in the industry. And uh, that you're not supposed to do. So as the article says here, uh, many of the women promoting the cancellation of men in comics and demanding they post the recent empty promise known as Comics Pledge are in fact hypocrites. So what's Comics Pledge? This is what what's Comics Pledge. Um, there's this silly um, image going around that covers that men in comics are supposed to act and behave a certain way. Uh, and then everyone who's a, a male professional in comics are supposed to do this and retweet this, and that's going to prevent them supposedly from uh, treating women badly somehow because women can't take care of themselves according to that pledge. So in any case... Um, as Penny says here in this article, I'm going to present evidence of lies, collusion, rumor spreading, and in my opinion, defamation and contract interference. Um, that she's not saying that she's a, a lawyer or any kind of, um, you know, uh, detective or anything. She's just saying that, hey, she's been in this face group, Facebook group. She's seen what these people are saying. Uh, it does seem pretty damn bizarre. Um, and I recognize some of the names of these uh, women uh, in the comic book industry, and I do not like what I see. So she writes here, I personally know that they have colluded for years to take down men. Um, that's a conspiracy. Um, specifically, those with conservative politics and philosophies. This is an ongoing coordinated effort. How do I know this? She says, because she obtained access to their private Facebook group. So Facebook allows you to have a group where you can select who is in and who's not in that group. You have to get approved by the Facebook uh, administrator if they want you in. And if they want you in, they let you in. Then if you're in, you can see what their private conversations are. Then within those Facebook groups, um, yes, apparently I know a lot about Facebook groups, but I'm not doing anything like this in there. So apparently in those Facebook groups, yes, they can discuss, hey, we want to go after this person. Does anybody know anyone who can help take them down, but see what they kind of, kind of say. So let's see what Penny's listing out here. So there's simply too much to put in one uh, leak, so I'll make the following three points for now. Good for her, this is a good article. The so-called comic book whisper network, which has been dismissed by, as a conspiracy since 2016, is real and uh, she has hundreds of screenshots to prove it. The Whisper Network has been targeting men and trying to destroy their careers and use their connections in comic books uh, and the comic book media to do it. The Whisper Network have acted unprofessionally and unethically at best. At worst, they've engaged in what she believes it could be illegal behavior. Um, I'm also not a lawyer, just like Penny, and what I'm seeing, it, it does look very, very sketchy, and there's um, liability. Um, Penny's story. She says she first heard about the Whisper Network back in mid-2016 from folks she knew at Image, DC, Marvel, and later Valiant. Depending on who she chatted with, sometimes the group was called the Women's Network, other times the Whisper Network. Occasionally the Whisper Campaign, and eventually there were more conspiratorial names used mockingly. Friend uh, Gender Swap 4chan, which became FemChan. Okay, fine. Regardless of the name, it was all the same group. The five or six names get popping up in conversation over and over again. Uh, as she ticked on, she noticed a trend on social media. Half a decade of rumors, false, false allegations, cancellation attempts, and they almost always trace back to these same five or six people. I have noticed that as well, as I've been involved in uh, independent comic book publishing over the last 
uh, two years or so, I've been noticing there are some of the same people that seem to be making these accusations who are kind of like out there and coordinating weird things where, and threats women uh, on uh, Twitter, for the most part I've seen. The goal of this Whisper Network, she says, according to industry folks, was simple. Choose a target, smear them until they lose their reputation, their income, and are ultimately blacklisted. Very sick people. Uh, opening up job opportunities for the same people who started these smear campaigns in the first place. They do get more jobs, but, you know, I, I don't know what their motivation is. This just sounds like it's just straight up evil or with unbalanced sick people. Um... Okay, behind the scenes, these cancellations are painted as morally or politically motivated, but in the end, it's all financial. Uh, that's her judging their motivation. Again, I, I just, it looks like it's evil to me, but I could, you know, I don't know. I, I'm, I find this to be like really horrific. But let's see. As time passed, the group in question seemed to more and more uh, like a reality. Okay, it seemed more and more like a reality. She saw their influence. She saw uh, that she knew to be verifi verifiably true, go viral online. Okay, excuse me. She saw things that she knew to be verifiably untrue go online, appearing in what I thought were legitimate news sources. I felt angry and helpless seeing innocent people get attacked, but did not know what to do. Because it's a freaking mob. A few years passed by in 2018. Almost everyone I interacted with in the industry seemed to know about the network, from top-level editors right down to the letterers. It was an open secret, but no one was willing to speak up for fear of being targeted themselves. They knew the consequences. That's why you got to publish independently, and not um, not be dependent on some corrupt uh, corporate structure to protect your interests. You got to protect your own interests. After all, this was a secret network. Without proof, there was no way, no point in going public because members would just deny its existence and use their media connections to smear anyone who challenged them. Then things got interesting, she says. December 16, 2018, Whisper Network a member Gail Simone, who joined the network six years ago, four years before the following tweet was posted, uh, mocks, quote, doofuses uh, who speculate in a whisper, that a Whisper campaign exists. Here she is, Gail Simone, saying, uh, yes, it's part of a Whisper campaign, according to doofuses. Yeah. Doofuses. People think they're so smart just because they're evil. They're not. They're just evil. That's me talking. Here's another tweet where Gail makes a list of fake things the Whisper campaign is discussing in an attempt to laugh away the notion. Whisker, Whisper campaign topics. Wow, this is really evil. One, the good Ben Stiller movie. Two, covering up for bad smells of cons. Three, comics page glue factor myth. Okay. Uh, at this point, in late 2018, she was kept skeptical of the Net Whisper Network's existence. She'd heard many stories of individuals spreading rumors and lies, and plenty of malicious behavior was going on behind closed doors, though she wasn't really believe it was ready to believe it was a coordinated effort or that there was collusion involved, meaning a few people collaborating to try to create momentum for a fake narrative. Then certain people began openly mentioning the Whisper Network, and her attitude changed. March 26, 2019, Heather Antos, a member herself, did not outright mention the Whisper Network or her involvement, but she made what some took as a veiled threat to those who got on her bad side. Pro tip, industries are small, people talk, don't be a dick. Yeah, okay. Heather, quote, milkshake girl Antos, and that's a whole other story. Uh, her call for backstory at Marvel and later at Valiant is notorious in the comic industry. A conversation about office rumors spreading and bullying is never complete without someone bringing up a juicy Antos anecdote. Everyone has one, apparently. Until then, she still hadn't seen actual proof of a larger scheme, but then something changed in 2020. January 8th, 2020, Alex... This is really creepy. Alex DeCampi, who I would discover... Um, is one of the most active Whisper Network members, openly admits there is a network. I have no idea if this was a slip or a brazen attempt to show off her power and influence, but it appeared on a tweet. Quote, uh, whatever she's saying here, uh, he's been verboten on the Whisper Network for years. Time to stop whispering and start shouting. Okay. People get drunk with power, so they say stupid things. Anyways, then on June 16th, 2020, another key member of the same group, Stephanie Cook, someone who DeCampi often praises, converses with, and trades retweets with, 
made mention of the same group again without naming it directly. Cook references driving, quote, shitty people out of the industry, end quote. Driving people out of the industry. Well, let's drive Stephanie Cook out of the industry, which is what the Facebook group have been working on in private for years. This is the most direct admission of the group's mission statement I had seen in public. I expect it will be deleted shortly. Whisper networks are not enough. They only protect people in the know enough to talk to people with insider knowledge. We need to do better at driving shitty people out of the industry. What a creepy person. Eventually, everything I'd heard and read was confirmed beyond any shadow of a doubt after I gained access to their private Facebook group. She was inside the Whisper Network. Good for her. That's where she was able to get these screenshots and now burn these people. This is where, this is the place where the Whisper Network had been colluding for years. From what I can tell, this is where they first met and started their coordinated campaigns. Members of the secret group called Comic Book Women. I hope they're freaking out right now. They really should be. What they're doing is wrong. She goes on to say, at present time, there are 440 plus members of the secret Facebook group called Comic Book Women. And from what she can tell, a few are regular users, uh, though many of them have never posted. So there's a link there. And unless you're a member, this will not show up in a search. All right. That makes sense because it's a secret group. Secret Facebook groups offer the same level of privacy as closed groups but operate under a cloak of invisibility. No one can search for secret groups or even request to join them. The only way to get in one is to know someone who can invite you. Everything shared in a secret group is visible only to its members. All right, so that's the private group of comic book women. Gail Simone, Zoe Quinn, Alex the Campy. Wow. Heidi McDonald, I know who you are. This secret group includes a list of members whose actions and connections speak for themselves. Yeah, I've seen Max Visage, Heather Antos. This is, this, is, this is troublemakers. Okay, and several key members of the group are women who work in comics in the comics media and can be used to run damage control, including women like Heidi McDonald of the of Comics Beat. She definitely does shape stories. I mean, I, I've definitely seen it. They have contacts outside of the secret network as well, with some male allies in both comics and the media. Just the fact that all these folks were secretly linked in a private network came as a shock to her, considering their reputations and the accusations they've made. Immediately, she began to connect the dots. They've denied for years they coordinate their actions in private, but of course they do. And yet, they always coincidentally appear on Twitter, retweeting and amplifying each other's accusations, signal boosting one another, and helping them gain traction. And their allies in media, Bleeding Cool and CBR specifically, will turn those same tweets into stories almost instantly with no fact-checking or verification, sometimes within the hour. And that's how they push out their uh, fictitious narratives. And they make it look organic, like, well, this is a hot thing that's actually going on that everyone's interested in. It's like, no, it's just manipulated narratives. So she says here she's going to start explaining who the key actors are uh, and from her perspective how they coordinate these attacks. This article continues on and names key actors, has links and screenshots. It's fairly extensive. This video could probably go on for another 40 minutes. I'm going to provide a link uh, to the in the description to this article if you want to check out the rest of it. Um, there's incredible detail, and there are going to be more future articles. So the author here really did a terrific job, um, really, really fantastic. And I definitely recommend that you check the rest of it out uh, if you're interested in it. And really, you ought to be interested in it. It's an important subject. Um, definitely check out College of the Dead. Uh, the book has done phenomenal. It's shipping... Uh, on time, it's shipped out already. It's shipped all over the world. Uh, we have extra copies, and those are shipping out immediately as well, if you're interested. The link's in the description. Um, the Mermaids is coming out very soon. It's going to be launching in July 2020. Uh, and we'll actually, it's completely done, so it'll ship on time, uh, just like College of the Dead did uh, in October 2020. And you can sign up so you're notified as soon as it's launched. Just go to epicmermaids.com. Uh, Thanks again for checking out the video. I'll see you soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.